Okay, right, oh, right. Episode number nine. nine. Welcome and thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed our previous chats. Um, don't hesitate. Nine, it's a lot, yeah. To send us feedback. Mm -hmm. And today we are going to talk a little bit about how to have better 2024. 2023 is something already almost over mm -hmm. and we try to have better 2023 than we did 2022 so we're gonna share a little bit of things that <coughs> help us to do that so we hope that you can benefit from um, that and a little bit we'll touch on the fact that the hustle culture is out, which, you know, it doesn't ha doesn't mean you have to not work or mm -hmm. sit and do nothing, but it's more so about balance. <clears throat> like if you look new generation, they definitely have different mentality than well, I think maybe you should define what hustle culture is because people might not understand what that means. <clears throat> the way I understand is mm -hmm. for me the epitome of hustle well or work first culture is when people used to you know work let's say nine to fives which not maybe really nine to five but it was more like even longer hours you know and weekends with no time for exercise, eating fast and junk food, not getting enough of sleep, drinking five cups of coffee a day just to like keep up with all the tasks. Um, this is what's a bad hustle culture. Well, and I think too for me, you know, when I think of when people say, oh, you got to hustle, you got to live that hustle lifestyle, you know, constantly be hustling. There's some truth to that, but at the same time, you know, working 24 seven or almost working all of the time, there was kind of this mindset of, okay, well, if you're just sitting around, you know, not doing anything, watching TV or just kind of hanging out, you weren't and not working all the time, you, you weren't hustling. You, you should be working all of the time. And that's what really just generates burnout. Well, um, yes, uh, but also um how productive you know you're not productive really when you working that right. much per se and is that really the best you know return on your time if you're not that productive those certain hours so if you fit in like an hour of exercise guess what like the two hours after that mm -hmm it's actually going to be more productive. So I think what's in right now is self-care is becoming more upfront and people realizing that, hey, I can't just be eating this fast food and drinking all this caffeine and not sleeping enough and hoping that my health will be great and I'm going to live a le long, healthy life. Mm -hmm. And then not spending time with your family, you know, it affects relationships too. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying you should put your career and work on, on back burner, but it's all about um, finding to do. First of all, hopefully you like what you do for work, you know. Mm -hmm. But even then, like working 24-7 is not the most healthy or productive for you if you don't balance with some recreation family time cooking some healthy foods you know not eating out all the time not yeah. eating fast foods not drinking enough water hydration and not getting sleep yeah because it's, it's not productive right it hurts you yeah actually, if you're working and your work if you're getting up early working all day not taking any breaks not taking time to relax and you know, even just taking something like uh, a local vacation, a lot of people say, well, you know, I, I need to get to the next step before I take a vacation. When I say take a vacation, 
go on like a three or four hour car ride, you know, and go somewhere local. I'm not talking about taking three weeks off and going to Hawaii when you can't afford it. <clears throat> but there needs to be a balance with everything, right? So when I think of the hustle culture, it was this constantly moving, constantly working, constantly being hungry, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but having some time to relax, recoup, take a different perspective on your work and, 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 and go from there. Yes, because, you know, um, that actually might hinder your process yeah. because you don't have that time to reflect and think of your next step. Right. You know, like um, I think it's Warren Buffett that reads most of his time. He just mm -hmm. reads books, you know, mm -hmm. and then he makes like one huge movement, mm -hmm. one one huge purchase, let's say once a year mm -hmm. that brings him millions, you know, so it's also working smart, not just hard. So when mm -hmm. you have that extra time, you can reflect, you can, uh, you know, read yourself, you know, maybe even, um, you know, watch a show, pot, listen to the podcast, go outside for mm -hmm. a walk. Um, so we need those, uh, we need those times. And, and, you know, I'm glad that the young culture generation, you know, they are different. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be frustrating that they like are more prone to say no, you know, and like jobs in the past used to make people work overtime and mm -hmm. seems like I know I don't know maybe that was in the 80s or 90s that people like put their work so much up front these days young generation like the millennials th they will say no like to their boss well, easily I, I think the idea is that previously years ago in the 80s or even the 90s it was you know you work really hard kind of stay at one job, you really move up the ladder, and that mm -hmm. company will, quote, unquote, take, take care you. of mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know, look at a, a place like IBM, you know, a company with a, with a storied history. You know, people would work there, get a job there, work there their entire life. The company would take care of them, great benefit package, great pension plan. And a lot of those perks are now gone. And the the thing that I, I think a lot of people look at now is especially after covid was what's really important in their life and how much money do they really need to be able to make those things mm -hmm. that are important to them yeah. happen yeah. and i think what a lot of people have looked at is hey like you know when these layoffs happen or there's a downturn you know companies are just hacking people or laying people off at the same time and it's like, OK, well, hey, all these people went the extra mile, did the extra thing. Um, if you're salaried, I think a lot of people are like, well, it was eye opening. Well, I think it's like, well, hey, like, you know, I've been putting in extra time. I've, you know, salaried. So you might may or may not be getting overtime or additional bonus. And it's like, well, if you want me to work extra, hey, I I'm willing to work extra, but it needs to be fair. Uh, you know, what can the company do to compensate me for that additional time mm -hmm. and i think what the compensation was before in the 80s or 90s was well you're, you know you're putting your time in you're showing that you're a company person putting the company first and the company will take care of you and i think a lot of people are seeing that that's not necessarily true anymore well and a lot of people um they hop you know from job to job to work up now mm -hmm. it's easier to actually get paid more in mm -hmm. certain careers and work up to uh higher positions when you hop companies mm -hmm. actually these days if you stay in the same company statistically you make less than if you would have transferred you know to a different company that's not true for all positions or all companies let's say mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be true for wellness industry like if you're a service provider you're probably better off staying with that same employer they will give you more perks over time than if you show up somewhere as a new employee especially if it's like commission paid jobs because you build up that clientele you know for example like i run brilliant massage and business so the longer people stay with us the more uh, we can give them gifts we can give them little bonuses over time we mm -hmm. can increase their commission once they have more 
uh, you know, regular clients, they, their books, mm -hmm. you know, they're book, booked out solid in advance. So you definitely have more perks. But let's say if you use mm -hmm. some vice president or uh, manager, you might be better hopping to another, you know, place to get paid more. Right. And there's two sides. I mean, there's two sides to everything. But one thing that I see with the job hopping is on a resume, if you see someone that is constantly job hopping. Well, there's a fine line. There can be a risk yeah, to that. You want to do that. I think what a lot of people are seeing is, you know, previously it's like you show your commitment to the company. The company will, quote, unquote, take care of you by, you know, extra things, incentives. But a lot of companies are kind of like, okay, well, you know, someone's been here three, four, five years. It's like they're looking for the next thing. And companies aren't necessarily providing what that next thing is, whether it's additional responsibility and compensation or just perks. You know, previously, a lot of times people, you'd work at a company five, 10 years, and it wasn't unheard of at a 10-year mark to get, you know, like a Rolex or, um, you know, a, a very generous gift from your company to show that you've made commitment to that company. Yeah, it's just different culture, mm -hmm. you know, but in a way is good. I think people um, like distinguishing these small clearer lines, their personal happiness, their personal success versus um, loyalty mm -hmm. to some sort of brand, you know, maybe not so good for our employers, but it, they it's good for, I think as a community, you know, uh, if they don't feel valued, if they don't feel they're getting paid enough, they can move and go work somewhere else. Yeah, and when I was at a conference in August of this year, yeah, it was August, when um, a couple of colleagues and I, we were at a conference, and we were at a talk, and one of the things that the presenters um, was saying about, you know, businesses these days were, um, or was, em employees can't enable poor managers. And what I mean from that is a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, I'm having difficulties with my manager or management, but you know, whatever, I'm just going to stick it out. And they're like, you know, that's kind of enabling poor management and don't be afraid to, at the end of the day, do what's best for you and more personal responsibility. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of people are like, well, hey, you know, I've been putting in my time. I'm a good employee. I'm loyal, reliable. And if you know, management doesn't see that, then maybe it's time to, well, to yeah. see what my... You know, and you shouldn't mm -hmm. um, lower your standards because of right. other people. You know, if yep. you have certain standards at work, mm -hmm. so that is, you know, that is the one tip for to have a better next year. You don't have yeah. to say yes all the time to something yeah. that you not super, you don't believe or you, your standards don't yeah. meet, you know, because you gonna become who you hang around with you mm -hmm. hang around like these mediocre people that don't even know how to manage properly you know you should leave that company. yeah and the thing to keep in mind too is with any job there's going to be things that that just need to be done and it might not be your first choice of, mm -hmm. of of things to do but if you're constantly and consistently being asked to do things that you know are not right mm -hmm for your own personal morals, just morals in general. Or perhaps even or, not integr without integrity. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's big things that at the end of the day, you need to make the best decision that is for you. But, you know, really things like that is where you need to look at what your options are potentially with yeah. another And, you know, let's not, I guess, confuse this with um, things where you should be putting some um, – extra initiative you know to maybe you have power to make things better mm -hmm. yourself so you know we're not saying take like complete responsibility off to just expect that everyone else will make things perfect you know yep. but if you tried to make suggestions you brought up the issues and it's still you know there is no like light at the end of the tunnel then mm -hmm. that's when it's yeah take to... development your personal development whether it's personal or professional into your own hands there's no one that's going to advocate more for you than yourself and if you've gone through those steps and advocated for yourself and gone through the process and things still are maybe not you know working out for you in the previous you know popular hustle culture at your current job maybe it's time to 
do something different. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, you know, adding like exercise to your routine or Definitely. cooking, health, cooking, eating healthy. Mm-hmm. That's you can schedule that in in your schedule. You know, just like a non-negotiable thing, like brushing your teeth is just mm-hmm. five minutes. That for most people, I think is non-negotiable well and you know, you know the thing with the exercise is hour, yeah. utilize it as you would time just in general there's a i was reading an article about how you can quote unquote manufacture time the the great equalizer is 24 everyone has 24 hours in the day but you can utilize those 24 hours by what is known as manufacturing time Right. So what exactly is manufacturing time? So take, okay, I'm going to go to the gym for an hour. What can you also do during that hour at the gym to not only get the benefits of exercise and, you know, relieving stress, but also to help plan. And maybe that's listening to a podcast to help, you know, on a topic that you're interested in. A lot of times when I'm at the gym and I'm running or, doing whatever i'll just try to think about like organizing my week organizing my thoughts utilizing time in in the car to um if it's safe (laughs) to to you know make phone calls or, or 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 things of that nature trying to look at these different pockets that you have during the day that you can actually utilize to manufacture time and you'd be surprised if Hey, you know, I'm going to be running out from the office to go to the store to get, you know, something to eat or, or whatever. It's like, well, you know, during that walk, can you, you know, maybe send a couple, you know, follow up on text messages, follow up on a couple of emails and these five to 10 minute things that you can do throughout the day. It's like all, all of a sudden you've manufactured one to two hours and that can then be time to that can be used to, like Yolita said, you know, read, do something fun, um, relax you utilize some extra time to cook etc uh we have um yeah and um i have listened to um i think it yeah brian johnson you know um mm-hmm. like even the the fact that uh, there is like anti-aging experts now and the wellness industry booming like um skincare massage and supplements um you know all like all these red led light baths that people even buy for their home you know Mm -hmm. and saunas and it just shows that people are really interested in um self-care and wellness and um that's why also i feel passionate about a growing um our franchise brilliant massage and skin franchise for next year Mm -hmm. um so uh, you know, that is that is a sign just like having anti-aging expert like that. I feel like you couldn't see something like in the 80s like this, right? Well, because in I, the past, people even I, I, used I to mean, smoke indoors, you know, and yeah, like but that's alcohol a, was more popular. Well, now. that's a, you know, a side effect of, unfortunately, marketing yeah. for the, the wrong purposes. But now people are aware but and they drink less alcohol. Yeah, I think that the, the thing that I want to say about these red bass supplements, anti-aging experts, e- et cetera, it's, it comes back to like, you know, something in the tech world that I think of. It's like you can't outsmart Google, right? Mm-hmm. So can you outsmart ant- aging? Yes and no. Are there... Uh, what happens to us over time is we oxidize, right? You know, that's what mm-hmm. happens to yeah. to humans. So what can we do to alleviate or make that process maybe slow or, or, or less destructive to our body? And I think it's very careful that we need to, someone's always, you know, a, a good salesman can sell um, ice to a, you know, an Eskimo, right? Mm-hmm. So, I think it's very important to look at a lot of these things as potentially tools that you can put in your toolbox, but not the end all be all. And where I'm going with that is take technology. A lot of times people look at, okay, well, there's a problem. How can I solve it with technology? And technology can be part of that tool, but technology is not the end all be all for a problem. A lot of times it's just, you know, someone taking responsibility for their own actions, but, 
if you have a poor diet and you're not eating well, it doesn't matter how much time you go to the gym or how many supplements you you take. I mean, it's, it's gonna... still going to help, like doing one or the other. Like you can eat bad and exercise, you're going to be healthier than you eat bad and don't exercise. You know, that's proven by studies. I think where I'm going with this is... But you want to have a balance. Yeah, is... A lot of these quote unquote anti aging experts, they're reading the same book that everybody else has been reading for years. It, it's it's simple math at the end of the day. So there's no surprise that drinking less alcohol or not drinking alcohol, not smoking, exercising, eating well, eating healthy, you know, trying to avoid um, just you know say cooking with 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 pans that have Teflon in it. You know, none of this is secrets. So. Yep. But then, you know, mm -hmm. there is things that they they discover, too, over time. And, of course, we don't know. We don't know everything yet about aging and um, the science. How You know, but they, you know, there are studies that they've been able to prolong, like, the life of mice, like mm -hmm. double, double mm -hmm. what they're. So, you know, so there is certain things, you know, that we could probably take in and you know mm -hmm. like some people say that supplements like don't work but if they didn't work then why would they be prescribed to pregnant ladies and then once the person is not pregnant anymore then okay well you don't need to supplement anymore which i think is a fallacy because most supplements what your body don't need it excretes anyway mm -hmm. so there's really very little harm in taking it in case you are deficient in something to take multivitamin that mm -hmm. could help, you know? Yeah, I know it's funny you mentioned multivitamin. I've asked, you know, over the years with just different doctors that I've gone to, just regular internal medicine. And, you know, clearly people that are not necessarily world renowned well, experts on it. Integrative, a but lot I of think what times. a lot of times what the studies show is that there's no real difference between a multivitamin user and uh, someone that has not been taking multivitamins and kind of the science between that is but we also don't really see any harm from it either yeah so it's like take it it might be you know help Expensive you get some of these tea you know but get it might not. some of these vitamins that you're missing a well-balanced diet will help with a lot of those vitamins you know some are just very difficult to get because of the nature of our food supply and and, and the just processing supply and the in general it some if it's not organic yeah especially. exactly and you know we live in a society where just you know obviously in vermont <clears throat> pineapples don't grow here right so I'll, you know so yeah. the of the shipping of food around as well but also, you know, talking about supplementation. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people don't know is that actually your food is already supplemented. Totally. Because look, any processed food you buy, even packaged mm -hmm. uh, cereal or bread, what does it say on the label? Vitamin B12, fortified. Yeah, fortified. You yep. know, if that was not fortified and you ate that processed food, you would be sick very quick. That's why the government pretty much adds vitamins in your food. So so the fact that supplements or vitamins don't work, that's already like a proven fallacy that they do work. If you just ate like plain um, wheat that's been processed, like th that means like white bread, you know, the healthy mm -hmm. part been removed, which is like the dark bread mm -hmm. that you get is healthier because it has like the fiber and everything and more uh minerals and vitamins um you would be sick you wouldn't have b12 you wouldn't have you know you wouldn't there's, get there's clearly supplements that are a, a part of a of this like human folate living and you um, know salt Iodized salt, you know, I yeah. is is a, a, a supplement they that, add iodine that it. is critical for yeah. humans that we just don't get yeah. enough of. But the idea about this heavy supplementation of your diet. Well, like hundred pills a day, you know. 
is not it's a bit exotic because that needs to be processed somewhere in your body. It, the kidneys essentially are processing that. So, if you look at historically in the United States, which is where we're obviously based, is that over the years, life expectancy in the United States has not been going up. It's been, so it's going, been going down. down. Yeah. And where this lifestyle of heavy supplementation and, you know, doing this and doing that to expand your life expectancy is not necessarily correlated. I to think it's just those. catching up now. I think. And I think what a big problem in countries or just, you know, these days is, you know, a stagnation of just movement is, you know, one thing, you know, we're so sitting in front of our phones or mm -hmm. computers all day is yeah. that just getting out and about and kids not getting outside enough exactly you know when i was a yeah. when i was a kid it was kind of the especially during the summer when um school was you know on break was okay the i think the street lights came on around you know nine or nine thirty at night and it was like okay once the street lights came on you kind of had to be home and i you know, everyone looked at it, it's like okay well bikes and skateboards and scooters that was like freedom when you were a kid now it's like the ipads you know, yeah and the you know couch. and going out and and i personally was always you know we were riding our bikes around and building forts in the woods and things like that and now the interaction with people a lot is through social media texting games um, is a big thing and a lot of times people think that they're communicating through games and social media but at the same time that's not it's how you communicate in, in the person. real world you know looking at people's facial expression we reading don't have people's, the same uh, exactly hormones exactly and a lot of times things you know over it, it's much easier to kind of send a nasty email to someone or a nasty text message when there's not that face-to-face -face, um, communication rather than just in person. Mm -hmm. So it, can be yeah, it's trying online. to look at your whole lifestyle from the top down and to where, get outside. yeah, where you can manufacture a time to put into place things that will help you that are not necessarily, well, I can still have or just outsourced more. Yeah, I can. It's yeah. like, well, hey, I'm going to, you know, sign up for this life rejuvenation extension program for X amount of dollars. That's not going to fix a, a poor diet. That's not I mean, going to fix poor it will exercise. Help, you know, it's something it's one step closer to perhaps doing at least something better. You know, it's still better than doing nothing you know if you can do anything to start with i would say do it i wouldn't discourage people i think what my recommendation for people is eat healthy exercise yeah don't drink but it's easy don't people smoke. know that already but people aren't doing what's it that's the problem exactly so what's difficult is not really knowing it but paying someone two hundred dollars a month to it's tell you to do that but is not necessarily going to help either it's like a gym membership yeah right? but some people need so that look at when you after the first of the year and sometimes like i'm like you know for the first couple of weeks of the of the year I, it's like I'll go running outside or hiking because the gym is just going to be slammed with all mm -hmm. those people that are like, hey, you know, great. I'm going to make this effort to, yeah. to, to you know, but listen, improve my if health. They signed up. They paid a year ahead for a personal trainer mm -hmm. to show up. They are more likely going to show up than if they just decided to go alone, because when you do it with other person or group that you know they're going to be there every week that same time waiting for you, you're more likely to stick with it than just being on your own. Like if you d if we didn't run together, you like you would be more less likely to keep up with it, right? I find that, you know, I'm into cycling, right? Yeah. Road cycling. Um and but not I typically everyone. find that most people are not interested in going. A lot of people are interested in going for a bike ride, 
And I'm like, oh, well, you know, let's go for like a 30 mile, two hour bike ride. And they're like, whoa, I mean, that's too well, much. Well, you just got to find the people. So you got to find the sport up. that is not necessarily dependent on having to do that with other people. Because other people have schedules and yeah, travel, but you know what you're talking like a more advanced, like extreme. You know, this is for someone that um, maybe don't have anything that they're passionate about in terms of sport. So they just need to pick up. You know, for example, when I started, so my 2023 New Year's resolution actually was exactly to date last year was to lift up, got back to regular exercise routine mm -hmm. and strength training. So I joined body pump, you mm -hmm. know, class and I made in my schedule twice a week, I was gonna do it. And guess what? I have to say I succeeded it. I did wrote it down with pen and paper. I stick it to the fridge. I was gonna do it and I did it. Mm -hmm. But it was because I knew the instructor was gonna be there. I knew the other people's going to be there. And at the beginning, you know, I was weaker. Like I would, didn't had as much muscle mm -hmm. as I do now. The weights were lighter. My movements were shakier. But these people there, they believed in me. They accepted me when I got there and they wanted me to come back. It's just something about, uh, I don't know, for me, something when you start something new it's good to have that support now mm -hmm. like i can just you know i don't need it as much anymore i could just go i do it online i can go in the in the you know the gym and do it on my own mm -hmm. the virtual but you know it's when you start it out you it might not be that fun but once you get better at, at it, it gets better, you get more confidence and you need less support. Yeah, with anything, you know, it's going to be difficult to start at the beginning. You're not going to know what to do, but people love talking about themselves and what they're up to. Right. So uh, what I've found, especially at the gym is, you know, bodies come in all shapes and sizes. So if that's one of your big hiccups of of going to the gym is that people are going to look at you funny or stare you just got to get over with that. Um, but the other thing too, is that people at the gym I found personally are very friendly, you know, and people are willing to, if there's a machine that you're not really sure how to use, uh, the gym that you go to might just have classes that are included in your membership just to show you how to use the equipment. But, um, there's been times that I've just, just, if someone's using the piece of equipment and they get up and they're done with it, you can just be like, Hey, you know, do you have a couple seconds you can just kind of give me a once over on how to do this and just, you know, check my form and you'd be surprised, you know, people are not most likely not going to say, Hey, like, you know, you're wasting my time or anything like that because they're there for the same benefits and the reasons and that the you same are. Goals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you feel like, you know, you're in the same tribe, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Or if you go running, you know, you do like 5K race. Yeah. You know, and there's, you ha there's that energy than running by yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I was talking to an individual uh, coworker and she was doing, um, I think it was the Burlington City Marathon and was doing it like a relay. And I was like, oh, it's like, what, like 10 miles each relay? And I think it was. And she was saying that, you know, it's like you run five to 10 miles to kind of in the gym to practice and like, well, don't you think you would want to run like the whole thing just to make sure that you can kind of do it, so to speak? She's like, well, like what we found um, by like reading a lot of different things is that once you start running and you're with other people and the adrenaline from the event, it kind of gets gets you over that mm -hmm. that final hump at the end. Yeah. So there is definitely power in that yeah. and you know and like um nick touched on you know statistics show that a lot of people do these resolutions new mm -hmm. years which usually revolves around the topics these like yep all topics i'm gonna eat better i'm gonna exercise more and guess what like about midway through february most people fall off of that train well and the thing too and is, we don't want you to yeah. be that person that's why my you recommendation know, is work backwards from the goal 
and what I mean from that is just just say your goal is to 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 lose ten pounds, okay? Just as an example. Or just get stronger and healthier. Yeah. Doesn't so have come to up with some goals. Loss. You yeah. know, even if it's just mini goals, and maybe uh, you know, you're you know what? For me, it was never about the. By weight the loss. end of this week, yeah. I want to be able to do, uh, you know, three push-ups or whatever, and it's like okay, well, so how do I get to that goal from here? So if it's like, okay, well, I really want to go to the gym and be more active in the gym. So how do we accomplish that goal? And part of that is setting up a schedule, manufacturing the time to be able Make to stick with that schedule. And what are you going to do when inevitably life comes up, travel, family, work needs, et cetera? And how do you balance that? So it's like, okay, there's yeah. going to be times where even though it's, hey, it's non-negotiable, I got to go, there's going On to be occasion, something that is going to yeah. come up. So how do we then, is it, we say, Just okay. Just do it the next day. Yeah, no, you know. Don't completely fall off the run. Yeah, well, okay, well, I have time the next day and move something around. But really thinking about how we move kind of backwards from the goal that we want to accomplish and what can we do to get there? And it might be, um, I was talking with another buddy about, you know, he kind of wants to get into some running. And I was like, hey, you know, I've heard a lot of people, the whole couch to 5K program um, is very popular. And if you've never looked it up, it's actually a pretty interesting program. It's tons of people have done it. And it breaks it down into a very manageable, like, well, wait, what do you mean? I'm going to just go from the couch in like a couple of months to running a 5K is a little over three it's miles not that and, difficult as but it if you kind of look at the program of okay here's the goal that's the final goal and then here are all the steps to get there it's very very obtainable and it even includes like okay you know we know that you're busy everyone's busy everyone has a schedule but it makes it a, in such a way that you can fit it into almost any schedule and maybe that's instead of going out to lunch with your coworkers, it's like We'll bring in some food and go for uh you know a thirty minute run. Yeah, and it's also doesn't have to be all or nothing attitude because some people think, mm -hmm. oh, if I sign up the gym, I have to go there every day. No, nope. hell no. No, nope. no. Even if you go just like one time a week, that's gonna make progress. Yeah. Two times, three times, ideal, you know, but. Yeah. You need also those recovery days to grow your muscle. If you overtrain, that's not going to be yeah, any well, good Well, and think too. of the goal. If the goal is to, quote, unquote, just go to the gym, then think about how do we work backwards from that goal in a manageable aspect. So it's like, okay, January 1st, going to the gym. For all of January, let's go. We're going to make a commitment once a week. You know, February maybe once a week and then we add on one week that's twice a week and just kind of build from there so then that way it's the goal is not oh my god i have to go to it's the gym i have to go to you. the gym every day i have to be doing this oh i'm sore because or like it's you yeah. gamify it and when i say gamify it it's think about like i used to travel a lot for work just as an example and if you can gamify work travel in the process of doing that travel a the travel becomes a lot more comfortable because you have some level of status with different carriers or, or whatever but then it turns it into a process that's a lot more manageable rather than dreading work or excuse me work travel or going to the gym how can we gamify it to make a lot smaller goals that we can obtain more easily and then also plan in time for when things happen and you need to look into your toolbox to, to take out a tool to help you deal with whatever that may be, you know, family issues um, or et cetera. Yeah. And also, you know, it doesn't have to be like if you try to eat healthy that mm -hmm. you're going to have to now cook every single meal. No, no. And if, and if you just um, cook once a week. You know, you bought raw chicken or salmon and some salad. Start 
start with one yep. you know and then maybe the rest you still use like a pre-prepared or um, some or eating somewhere out um, or get you know like a green chef subscription a lot of these meal companies can ship yeah. to, to so you can learn how to do it it gives you step-by-step -step directions um so well, it's okay to start yeah. small 80 20 rule too and that you don't mm -hmm. have to eat now only broccoli all the time you can still have some good treats once in a while you don't want to well and that's part of a, a balanced diet right to, re to reward yourself and i think for a lot of people or make healthy chocolate yeah. like we we've been making yeah. raw chocolate I very think easy to a make. lot of people it's like okay well, you know they know they need to eat better right so how do we break that down into a, a process that's more manageable? And maybe for the first month, it's continuing your same diet that you've been doing, but just cutting back on the portions. And a lot of what Americans eat- But if you eat, eat healthier, you can actually eat more larger volume Yeah, but what food. we're talking about is, you know, how can people implement this, right? And, and, and saying, okay, eat healthy food. Everybody knows that they need to eat healthy food. That's not- you know, that's something that is almost innate. But how do we get there? And let's break it down into steps. So the the same thing with the gym. It's like the first step is almost just continue your same diet, but just try to eat a little bit less and see that's kind of the but first eating step. Less, I mean, the I second don't step know is that to would help because then you feel more hungry, you exercise more. I think I think a lot of reason why people feel hungry is that either a they're dehydrated which is a big thing a lot of times people think that dehydration is actually hunger or they're just eating because they're bored or out mm -hmm. of habit maybe what you mean don't eat crap just because don't eat like less of normal like we're not saying cut your like protein off you would want to increase your like protein chicken eat what egg, you should be eating stuff, in terms of yeah. portion size but just don't so, eat junk food yeah you know and if it just a, a small thing to start with you know say you want to eat a chocolate bar right most people eat the entire chocolate bar at once you know i'm guilty of that but just as a first start eat half yeah, of it so eat less bad yeah. foods but you eat know more good foods. if you yeah. are going to mcdonald's get a, a medium fry instead of a large or, yeah. or whatever i think that's a lot of to, these to little steps will help you get into the groove but it then becomes kind of second nature and then you're able to manufacture a time to, to do, you know, okay, I've kind of figured out portion control and eating a little bit better by just making some of these easy substitutes. Let's try now, um, you know, doing a meal plan service or whatever to help kind of make that less, less going out to, to eat. And when you do go out to eat, you know, portion control is a lot of times, um, much more than what you yeah, should and be write eating. down your goals you know mm -hmm. it's studies show that people who actually write them down yeah. on pen and paper are mm -hmm. more likely to complete it and i noticed that for myself yeah. and i think with your goals one of the things that i do is you know write down a goal and the goal is say go to the gym but then under that how are you going to accomplish the goal and doesn't need to be a novel but okay Go to the gym. Okay, one thing is maybe, um, you know, do some do enough running so that I feel comfortable um, doing a 5K and do a 5K fun run. Um, you know, they're they're all that they're happening all the time. Um, and the next, you know, the first quarter, and then it's almost like these goals are kind of like a company's mission statement. Yeah. And the idea behind a mission statement with a company is when things kind of get messy or you're not really sure what to do in a certain situation it's like go back to the mission statement if your mission statement includes you know quick response and high quality customer service you know in a situation you can kind of always go back to what your mission statement is go back to your goals look at the steps to accomplish those goals um, when you kind of maybe have other things pop up in your life or you know and um what is you would say your new year's resolution i think you know it's always 
eating healthier and being more active in terms of exercise because as we get older those things become paramount because if you're not able to physically able to do things or you know you're lethargic because you're not eating correctly it doesn't really matter yeah. a lot of the other goals so obviously being healthy from a, a food and fitness perspective i also think you know a goal is to obviously just increase revenue in general um, you know, push packages more for in terms of, um, you know, being working with, you know, a technology company, but also looking at what we can well, help of, more people. Yeah, what we can do from kind of, technology. you know, a, a, a large overview of, okay, where do we want to go at the end of next year? And then how can we set manageable goals in there? And then also additional things that we can put into our kind of virtual toolbox in our head that if it's like, okay, you know what, I'm going to take all of my, all of my customers and put them on whatever package or plan that we have in terms of technology, right? Just as an example, inevitably there's going to be clients that are going to be like, you know what, I don't want that. I'm not, I'm not willing to pay that. It's like, okay, so how do we handle that? Is it we're willing to kind of, negotiate a little bit on our packages or on a price or maybe create a custom package for them or is it well un unfortunately this is what we're going to the reason we're going to it is because of these reasons and maybe they're regulatory or requirements of insurance insurance dictates a lot of things um, unfortunately now in technology the same with healthcare. but how do we deal with you know some of these clients that will be like you know what not into it and it's and is it okay, we'll kind of keep them on a legacy plan. Or is it, okay, I understand that. That's completely all right. This is where we're moving as a company. We want to serve you under this common platform and maybe you part ways. So it, it's, you know, how do you deal with things like that? Because inevitably life and things are going to pop up. So adding things into our toolbox, so to speak, to be able to deal with so those situations. So that's your goal to add better sales toolbox? I think, you know, the, the goal say? in general is to obviously to increase revenue and increase, you know, the sale of packages because packages from a technology standpoint are really where, you know, that, that income and that evening out of, in, in, uh, excuse me, evening of income comes out that's a, a known cost or, or known revenue that's coming in. Um, a lot of IT companies kind of get stuck in what's known as like a break fix mentality where something breaks, customer calls, you fix it. And while that's a great way to start out, really where the power of services comes in is when you can start putting people onto packages. Um, so you have that monthly, re re excuse me, monthly recurring revenue coming in, but also for the fact that hopefully by having those packages and services in place, that the break part of the break fix is not as common as it was before. Mm -hmm. So it's benefit to the customer at Correct. the end of the day. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I have for my personal goal, I have I want to manage my time even better. Also, I want to learn to say no to certain things better. I am sometimes a yes person and I then I suffer. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to maximize my also getting paid per hour, optimizing the tasks that I do to the to the highest skill that I have and trying to minimize tasks that I shouldn't be doing because tasks that could be easily outsourced I technically should not be wasting my time because I could be doing a task that will have a higher return on investment of that time and I could help more people that way so that's where hopefully we can get into and scale up and speed up and start mm -hmm. up our franchise and growing more mm -hmm. uh, brilliant massage and skin um, locations that way I will help way more people and scale up than you know just managing two locations that we have right now which is mm -hmm. it's definitely not a medial task 
but you know um i have the tools and resources to make it more streamlined where mm -hmm. i could branch out more into this other avenue god willing and if everything goes well you know mm -hmm. at the end of the day we'll see what happens mm -hmm. but that is the goal but aside from the business goals that also my personal goal is just to say no to some things and manage time better mm -hmm. next year i already got my fitness and diet pretty much in check so i'm sure there's always could still be improvement there but mm -hmm. i'll just want to keep that up so that would be great yeah well probably should wrap things up right so what are the what are the closing the closing argument i think the closing is that for next year i hope that you all can find peace mm -hmm. within yourselves mm -hmm. whatever you decide to do you know if you decide to um improve your health through exercise or eating better or mm -hmm. leaving a toxic place relationship um family members saying no or whatever you decide to do you know there's many ways and mm -hmm. many avenues that we could improve through i hope that it comes comes to fruition and reality yeah. because we need happy people on the planet you know yeah and i, um, I think you yeah. know looking at my kind of happy advice so to speak is look at what goals do you want to set how do we work backwards from those and then you know what can we do that is the best for us right what's the best thing that we can do for ourselves at the time with the knowledge because that we have? if we not good to ourselves we can't serve other people well Correct. Correct. You know, if we not healthy if we not happy and mm -hmm. and short and depressed and snippy yeah. or you know overworked that what mm -hmm. can happen to you if you're just yeah. over the edge you know and yep. your family doesn't want to be around you because you're always like tired well and you'll be you know the more if you're just running yourself into the ground you're going to be tired you're going to be sick and yeah then that's not you know good for what you're trying to accomplish if you're trying to if you try to lead a company yeah, if or you're trying business, to lead or or you know or you're putting family, in extra you know, time for kids. whatever reason you yeah. know being sick is not gonna help that yeah and you can't say i can't exercise because like of kids no you should exercise because you have kids because yeah. you want to stay young well, as and try much to as gamify as you it with your kids too. you know yeah. try to find something that you can do with your kids or your family as something as a goal for the entire family yeah we saw people with strollers you know running 5k races so yeah definitely can be done. i mean you know nothing for myself is more motivating than someone passing you during a With 5k a run <laughs> pushing a stroller yep uh, there was Good one motivation. i don't remember which one but there was um a so guy people killing it yeah he was pushing With a stroller strollers, and yep. i'm not really it was some kind of like backpack so to speak that his he, you know so he's got mm -hmm. pushing a stroller he's got a, his other kid on his back the kid's like absolutely he having the time younger, of his but life yeah. and i'm like okay the, you know Still very what's powerful. this and yeah. um i think it was in bicycling magazine years ago i saw a picture and it was um you know this one world renowned cyclist and you know I, I don't know if it was what exactly happened but you know he only has one leg and he only kind of has like half of one arm and this guy is just a beast mm -hmm. on the bike and his whole thing is what's your excuse yeah exactly you know well, he's so the motivation yeah so example, it's just like yeah. you know you look at this guy and it's just like oh my god this this dude is just amazing on the bike and it's like what's my excuse you know so yeah yeah exactly you we believe in you yep. um you can do it mm -hmm. uh there's many avenues to improve for 2024 mm -hmm. so we wish you the uh that to fulfill those um and again thank you for listening please subscribe to our show yeah we'd love to hear from people too. yes on the youtube and mm -hmm. itunes and spotify 
and hope you have a brilliant 2024 and holiday season if you celebrate christmas hopefully santa will <laughs> do good stuff that was a clap for santa yeah. <laughs> not too much wasteful yeah. hopefully yeah but um yeah thank you again see ya